hey, YouTube just told me that we've got 100 subscribers. We did? Yeah. <laughs> you don't know this, but we do a happy dance in our heads every time we get a new subscriber, even when we're here in Slovenia. Why is it in our heads? Well, frankly, if it wasn't, it would look a little something like this. sorry that you all had to see that. I'm not. It's worth celebrating each and every one of our subscribers. We are so grateful for you and for watching our videos. But now, we'll return you back to Greece. <laughs> Good morning. Since we arrived in Greece, starting way back in Idra, whenever people have heard that we're coming to Delphi, they've said to us, oh, you have got to go to the monastery that's in that area. It's beautiful. It's one of the best in Greece. And so it wasn't far out of our way. And when that many people make a recommendation to us, we have to seek it out. So we, here we are at a Byzantine monastery. We don't know what to expect, but I guess we're about to find out. It's also an UNESCO World Heritage Site. of Ozios Laucus. We'll call him by the English equivalent, St. Luke. Luke lived in this area around the mid 900s and he was known to be a prophet as well as a great healer. People would travel from miles and miles around in order to potentially see him and be healed. He was known for being able to heal people from very uncommon, hard to treat ailments. Around the year 1000, he is the one who oversaw the building of this monastery so that pilgrims who came from all over to see him would be able to have somewhere to live, as well as the monks who joined him as part of a monastery that St. Luke founded. The monastery has a room that they have retained the decoration similar to what the monks would have been living like. Just for reference so that you understand the perspective, this room is about eight by eight feet long and wide. It's decorated modestly. There's enough space for a pilgrim or a monk's personal belongings, though they would have been few. And I'm sure a Bible would have been, oh yep, here's a Bible right by the bedside. And really that's about it, a bed, a chair, and a stove for comfort. This is where the monks would have stayed, but also they had spaces for the pilgrims who came here to seek healing to stay as well. The tradition that continues today, monasteries everywhere, uh, have some kind of money-making uh, activity. So we normally prefer the ones that make beer. Uh, this one and also many others in Greece focus on making olive oil. up our time here at the monastery. It took us about an hour and a half and it's a quick detour off of the road, maybe about 15 minutes in each direction if you're headed from Delphi to Athens or vice versa. And it is the best preserved Byzantine church in all of Greece. And if you like, you can actually buy some of their olive oil and they have red and white wine, I guess that they also make here. And uh, we're not able to bring those home, unfortunately, because we aren't checking bags. We have to limit our liquids, unfortunately. 
Boo. Boo. Yeah. It's something we like normally like to do when we travel is bring home something we can Consume. eat or drink or <laughs> cook with, but not this time. We are headed off to Athens. Where we probably will encounter some more ruins. A bunch of piles of old rocks, really? They'll be the first that we've seen. Mm. Won't let you down. Won't let you down. should be able to see the Acropolis behind us. Right, right above, above Heather's head. <laughs> right about there. <laughs> and uh, we are actually saving that for tomorrow. For this morning, our plan is to hit the food market and see what we're able to find there. Walk around a few neighborhoods and it's time to get our swab because we go home in a few days. One of the COVID things that you'll need to pay attention to if you travel to Europe this summer. Are we filming that? If our viewers are lucky. <laughs> Ooh, something to look forward to. to go to the market, especially the fish market, don't, don't wear, wear sandals. sandals. If you do wear sandals, when you leave, your feet will not smell like the flowers behind us. Okay, yes. you want the two wrapper? Yes. Okay. just finished with our rapid antigen test and it was a piece of cake. We actually have only done the spit test because that's what is freely available in Minnesota and I thought it was no problem. It was no big deal. It was 20 euros each. Uh, we were, once we stood in line for just a short while and we filled out a form, uh, maybe it was 15 minutes end to end, to end. It was very quick and easy. We'll have the results in a half hour.
me sweating. morning we are here on our way to the Acropolis. We were informed on the way inside that there is no videoing up at the Acropolis uh, and that includes for YouTube so we are doing a quick little snippet down here. We might try to sneak something with our other camera at top. It doesn't have a microphone attached to it but we might try giving you a little bit of footage just to see what it's like up there. south side of the Acropolis, looking at the Parthenon. You can see on the right there's a semi-permanent construction shed for all the work that's been going on for more than 50 years. It's just an ongoing project. In front of me here are all of the ancient uh, bits of marble that they have to work with. And it's just astonishing the sheer quantity and variety uh, that they have to put this puzzle back together. We just wrapped up the Acropolis and the Parthenon, and we're here at the west entrance, just down in some gardens, which are quite nice. Uh, we did sneak some videos. Snuck a couple things. It's not the best quality, but it'll have to do. It took us about two hours uh, on top, and that was with pretty minimal filming. By the time we left, there are throngs of tourists here. We got up early. We actually set an alarm. It sucked, but I'm so glad we did it. It was not only cooler, but far fewer people were here. And by the time we left, tons and tons and tons of people. And at 8 a.m. Uh, when we got here, when they opened, there were just, I don't know. We were maybe 30, the 25th people yeah, in line. Like it that. wasn't bad at all. Line. We got in in about five minutes. It wasn't bad. Yeah. So, so in comparison to when we were here in 2006, I would say the level of the crowds is about the same, which actually is kind of remarkable given that the popularity of travel to Europe has increased significantly in the past 15 years. So I would say that the levels of tourism right now are about what they were 15 years ago. It's not to say that you'll be the only person here if you come to Athens, but far fewer than there were here, say, two years ago. So this is still a great time to come and visit the Acropolis as far as we're concerned. Here And also we learned that normally uh, there's on the order of 6,000 cruise ship passengers that get dumped into uh, this area uh, and most of them are going to go up this hill, let's be honest. So, uh, so this right is right now they're time. missing. Yeah, they, they're not we, here. We don't know when they're coming back, <laughs> right. but hurry and get here before they do or hurry and come back before maybe all the ships do. Even yep. if there's one or two ships, it's far fewer than there would be normally. Earlier the better. Since we're here at the lounge, we thought we'd uh, wrap up on what our thoughts were on Athens and Greece both as a whole. So we were in Greece for about two and a half weeks and I feel like that time was about right. Uh, actually, do you have a favorite city that we went to? I think the place I'd like to go back to most was Delphi. 
I felt we didn't have enough time there. Um, there was all sorts of hiking in the area, and we just we just ran out of time. Yeah, that's a good choice. I would probably have spent another night in Cardamele. I loved the relaxed, chilled back vibe of that town, and I loved how far it felt off the beaten path. It just had that feel that made you want to relax and slow down and just take it easy. So I, I really would have appreciated another night there. Now that being said, maybe we should say on three what our least favorite city was. See if it's the same. All right. Okay. Ready? Yeah. One, two, two three. three. Athens. Athens. <laughs> I think that we both felt that we had a much better time in the Peloponnese and up in the mountains near Delphi, as Bill said. Mm -hmm. Athens is not our favorite city. I know where lower my voice so people don't hear us. It's, not, it's just not our favorite city in Europe. It's, it's kind of dirty. It's The buildings are kind of boring. It's, it's, it's Except gritty. for the ancient stuff. It's gritty. It's just yeah. a little bit gritty. Uh, now we have other cities that also are gritty that we just like a lot more. It just, we didn't vibe with Athens and that, that's okay. But we'd encourage you, if you come to Greece, get outside of Athens to really meet the people and to really dive into the culture that's around you. We, we felt like we had a more authentic experience by getting into the Peloponnese than staying here in Athens. There's actually very nice areas of Athens, mm -hmm. um, especially the tourist areas, although that could be problematic with restaurants, you know, high prices for low quality and that kind of thing. But speaking of the food, here in Athens, all the immigrants are here and they yep. bring with them their fabulous food culture. So we had some incredible non-Greek food while we were here in Athens yep. so that was really fun we appreciated that about the city that was probably our favorite thing was yeah. the ability to eat such diverse food yeah, in so we city. had so we had sushi we had great Indian food mm. we had excellent excellent Vietnamese food fantastic we'll, Vietnamese we'll, food. we'll link to all the restaurants that we went to that we would recommend mm -hmm. so if you go to Greece by all means go to Athens see what there is to see in Athens enjoy it and then get out and go to something else. Mm -hmm. um, For us, it was nice to be able to land, and this is our first time traveling in since a while. the start of yeah. the pandemic, yeah. and getting outside of Athens right away and getting used to traveling and getting used to how things are done here from a COVID perspective. Yeah. It was really nice to be able to ease into that so that we were ready for Athens. I think that would be my recommendation. Land in Athens and get out and go to other places or go to the islands and save Athens for last and really look forward to the food. It'll be fantastic. Now. I'm just now.